Hello everyone. Today we're just going to be doing a little bit of a design overview of my uh, DIY flight stick. It's uh, my latest project. It's taken a little over six months, uh, just on and off, kind of working on the design, trying to improve it as best I can. And I think I'm at a stage where I'm pretty happy with it and ready for release for all of you guys to, if you're interested, purchase the design file and uh, try it out yourself. But anyway, I'm just going to do a little quick overview. Um, in the past, I, well, I, I started working on this project in Fusion 360 just because that's what I knew how to use and it was pretty good for the most part. It did most of the work here, but I had some trouble with some of the like of the fillets and just a lot of the uh, getting those smooth round uh, surfaces. And so I switched over to plasticity, and I really I'm really enjoying it so far. It's allowed me to be. Uh, be a lot more free in my uh, how I design things and it's what I've been using to finish the design so we're just gonna take a quick overview of how some of these things uh, fit together some of the design choices I made and yeah let's go it's just so here we've got the rendered colored uh, view. Just turn on these uh, edges back on again. But anyway, let's start up here in the the grip. Now originally, uh, I have a prototype right next to me. You guys probably won't be able to see it, but I'll put some screenshots, some photos up of it. But originally, it was kind of ugly, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, so I wasn't too happy with some of the buttons uh, that I was using and just like the whole thing was kind of difficult to put together. So I've changed that now. Things should be able to just be printed in like single pieces. Like the grip was split down the middle and if, you, if your printer, like in my case, is not like dead accurate, you would be left with a pretty significant gap right down the middle and that just like it's, it's kind of ugly nobody likes that so I've split it into two pieces now let's just isolate these so we've got the bottom and we've got the top it uh, I don't know if it's really it should be reducing um, support material when you're printing it there's another plane so so yeah, you would print this section with uh, this face on the build plate and it would put supports all up in there and it would, it's mostly, I've mostly done this just for like, to, for one, removing that center gap and it also, it'll make it look, it'll have a, a, a better print finish, hopefully. Um, I'll show you how the trigger section works. So we'll just hide all of these. So basically, let's just put the colors back in here. This is a two-stage trigger that I've sort of designed here. You've got your main trigger, your trigger housing, and then your two... Uh, switches just in there and it's held down with this other 3D printed little bracket that just screws into place you'll have to get your M3 5mm inserts put them in there and then you can screw this down and it will hold it in place there's this notch right at the front in the uh, main 
top grip section and that will stop the trigger housing from falling through. And two stage trigger like halfway is the first trigger detent and then all the way in will be uh, the second trigger. Here we've got two head switches. I've changed from my fully custom uh, switches and I've changed it now to these five way um, navigational through hole switches. So it's one uh, left, right, up, down, and then you push in, that's the fifth. Uh, that's just as simple as gluing those in and squeezing on the hats. All these buttons, 16, a 16 millimeter in diameter, and you just push those in from the front. So it's nice and easy. Same with these ones down here. And all of that will go, you'll solder everything up, all the wires will go down and it will fall through this hole. Right now I'm having a bit of a graphical issue where it's not doing that inside bit, but there will, there will be a complete uh, print and the wires just go down and they come out this hole here. So that's just the grip section. It's pretty simple. Here we've got the housing. Now from the old one, the old one was quite a bit larger, has a larger footprint and it's kind of just very mechanical or rigid, ugly looking. I don't know about the best word for that, but it's uh, symmetrical now, each side. And on the inside, here we have our gimbal. It's pretty similar to the first one the prototype, but we'll just go over some of the things I changed. I've moved the USB-C input over onto the the right, if you're looking at it from the front, just to make way for this uh, roll cam. I have redesigned it, so now it's flipped. The side, uh, it used to sweep in the other side, but now it's just basically flipped over. Front row block. I've changed the uh, design of this sensor mount so it can just be printed uh, in one piece without support. And I've moved the magnet uh, uh, places, spots, just a bit closer to the sensor so it gets a little bit more of an accurate reading. And again, that should be printable without support if you print it on this top face or at least minimal supports same for the pitch uh, sensor assembly move the magnets closer together same sensor mount and these sensor mounts these just push into place you'll print it on this face here and you just push it in to the, um, the, the key on the axis. This is the whole gimbal assembly is mostly the same. I just moved it uh, inwards a bit to get a little bit more room or just make the whole like base smaller, I guess. This is just a mock-up uh, Teensy 2.0, which I'm currently working on the code for, but using the Arduino joystick library, it doesn't quite work out. So I'm gonna have to figure out a workaround for that. But um, if you're using, if you plan on using some kind of Arduino, uh, I've got the code for it, or most of it. Uh, might not be the best, cause <laughs> I'm no like programmer or anything, but if you want it, let me know. And yeah, I don't know. It's all largely the same. I've gotten rid of the the twist because it's kind of just a little unnecessary in my opinion for what I'm trying to do with it. 
it's just a standard pitch and roll axis uh, joystick. Everywhere, every place where there's a M3 screw, there's a M3 heat set insert on the uh, other side. Just to let you know for that. Same for here. Whoops. There's inserts that go on each side of that. And you just place the grip down on top. These are M3 by 35 millimeters, I believe. And they just throw straight into the plastic. These are M4 by 12 millimeters, four, uh, four in total here. They just throw into the plastic. And then two M4 by 20 millimeter. <coughs> Sorry, my voice. It's getting a little dry. And these just thread through and you'd put your M4 hex nuts on the other side if you wanted to, depending on uh, if you're worried about springs flying off. But I don't know, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you're interested in picking up the design file for these, these are available on my Colts 3D page. And thank you for watching again. <laughs> See you later.